Greer from Lincolnshire is a world-class welder, having competed at the 2007 World Skills in Japan. Training for the event means that Stuart's skilled in a number of welding techniques. In Japan, he won a medallion for excellence and a top 10 spot in a field of 25 international competitors. One of the tests he faced was an advanced plate weld using TIG and manual metal art welding. To add to the complexity of the task, the plate had to be welded in the upright position and competitors had to weld from bottom to top, making sure there was no runoff from the weld. I had to set a, with a stick route, which we don't do it very familiar with at work. You have to set a certain gap, and uh, to hold the to hold the metal you're putting in, you have to put a root face on. So when you grind it, it it puts the metal at the back. So you have to file it off, just so you're not getting no sharp edges or inclusion. And then the stop start goes continuous. So it's the same width and uh, size all the way along. It's so have to do a lot of grinding. The choice of rod for manual metal arc welding is crucial as the amount of flux varies and affects the quality of the weld. The rod that I, I picked up had more flux on it and at the back of the weld, instead of it being normal <laughs> flux, it was all, uh, all silicon-like, black, and uh, it just don't give a good as weld as what I'm, I'm used to. Thank God I actually checked on my scrap first before I hit the big, the, the big, uh, the big plate and then, uh, and then uh, thankfully realised and uh, corrected it and then it went all right from there. I'd not used the rods because we couldn't import them into Europe. So, uh, but I had enough time to practice, and uh, it's I don't know. Once you get the technique and the size and the gap, then it's not too bad. Like the judging of the plate test involves exposing the material to some extreme measures. We uh, actually take an X-ray of it to make sure that it's completely sound, and then we cut two straps, and that's what we're looking at: the straps that were cut out of this specimen, and then we bend them. Here's a, uh, an imperfection in the root bend, uh, which would uh, create a problem and cause a, a reduction of their scoring mark. But Stuart's technique paid off well. These are the bends taken from this, the test plate completed by UK's welder Stuart Greer. And both of these are perfect, have good full marks. The main test project was to fabricate a pressure vessel. Competitors are given a kit to assemble and weld in 12 hours across three days. Several welding techniques have to be employed. Four processes are used. It's manual metal arc, TIG welding, mag welding and flux cork arc welding. And the competitor has to look at the drawing and be able to identify the correct process for the correct type of joint. But they cannot flip it over. In other words, all the joints have to be welded in position with all four welding processes. This is the pressure vessel Stuart has completed. See here now all the joints are um, welded compared to the vessel there. 100% visual examination against a very stringent criteria. We're looking at this now from a, um, a quality viewpoint. You'll see here now this weld here was completed with the mag welding process. Visually perfect. This weld here was completed with the TIG welding process. Here we have a weld complete with manual metal arc, all of a high quality. However, some areas are not as good as they ought to be, bear in mind the difficulty of the application. For example, just here. The ripple formation is a little bit inconsistent. Also here where the weld's been terminated. Once the visual inspection is carried out, the vessel is there tested hydrostatically to 1000 psi. And the vessel has to hold that pressure for 60 seconds. It's a very tough test, bearing in mind the implications encountered on welding something of this nature using four different welding processes. And Stuart chose an approach to the test that was different to the other competitors. It's, uh, it's all about how you, uh, how you go about it and where you start. I, I, it's even more awkward for me because I don't use flux core at all at work. I don't use mag at all at work. I just do TIG pipes with stick fill and cap. And uh, so it, it was quite hard to learn it. I adopted the, uh, the weave technique on, uh, on the mag and a lot of people did it in stringers which it's, it's easier, I don't think it looks as neat and the weave, uh, some people, I think I was the only one who did it all with, there's an incline outside corner and then it went to a horizontal which is quite hard but uh, I've been practicing it, it come off quite good so I'm not going to change it just because they've, they've done stringers so hopefully I'll get a few more marks for using a different technique. The smallest of leaks in the pressure vessel would mean the loss of many marks but Stuart's advanced skill level ensured success. 
as soon as they leak, that's your outline. There's no chance of anything recovering back. There's just so many points like weighing on it. So that's the only third vessel I've, uh, I've welded, I've had testing this there. Uh, first one to pass when it comes there. So I'm quite pleased because talking to some people, I've been training for years, three, four years, and not, none of them fail. Comes a big time and uh, they fail. And luckily mine, uh, mine held, so I'm quite pleased with myself.